Here I'm going to do a t-test example where nearly everything I say is wrong. Some of the statements I make in this video will be nightmarishly bad, but they might sound reasonable to the untrained ear. And I'll bet I can make some of it sound pretty convincing. So you probably shouldn't even watch this video. I'll talk a little more about why I made this video at the end. Suppose I'm interested in the question, is the mean weight of cucumbers in my garden equal to 200 grams? To investigate this, I go to my garden, get four cucumbers from a plant, and weigh them. The mean weight of the four cucumbers is 214 grams, and the standard deviation is 25 grams. And suppose we want to carry out an appropriate hypothesis test to help us answer this question. Here we want to know if the mean weight of cucumbers in my garden is equal to 200 grams. And so we are going to test the null hypothesis that the mean weight is equal to 200 grams. What should we use for an alternative hypothesis? Well, as per usual, we have three options, greater than, less than, or not equal to. But here, the mean weight of the four cucumbers in the garden is 214 grams, which is greater than 200 grams. And so, if this sample gives us any evidence against the null hypothesis, it's going to be that the mean is greater than 200 grams. So that will be our alternative hypothesis. What about the significance level? Here we don't have a given significance level, and when we don't, we just pick alpha, our significance level, to be 0.05. We want to do a test on a mean, so we should be doing a t-test, but we need to ask ourselves a few questions first. Is it a simple random sample? I've gone out to my garden and picked four cucumbers. If I were to go out again and pick four cucumbers, I likely wouldn't pick the same four. I could have picked any cucumbers in my garden, so every cucumber had the same chance of being picked. So yes, this was a simple random sample. Are the observations independent? Well, let's think about this. I took a cucumber, put it on a scale, and got its weight. I then took a completely different cucumber, put it on the scale, and weighed that. So knowing what the first cucumber weighed tells me nothing about what the second cucumber is going to weigh. They were weighed independently, and the observations are therefore independent. Are the observations normally distributed? Although this is sometimes an important question in statistics, this is not an important question for a t-test. If we were doing a z-test, which is based on the test statistic being normally distributed, then this would be an important question. But we're going to be using a t-test here. The t-statistic has a t-distribution, and we won't need to concern ourselves with normality. Here's our example once again. The t-statistic is x bar minus mu over s over the square root of n. Mu is the true mean weight of cucumbers in my garden, and that's simply given here in the null hypothesis. So our test statistic is the mean value from our sample, 214, minus the true value of mu, 200, over the standard deviation of 25, divided by the square root of 4. And that works out to 1.12. We need to make an appropriate decision. We need to find the p-value. And we will find that from the t-distribution. But we need the appropriate degrees of freedom. And for a t-test, the degrees of freedom are always n minus 1. So here, the degrees of freedom are 4 minus 1, or 3. I'm going to draw in roughly here a t-distribution with three degrees of freedom, zero in the middle, and the observed value of the test statistic at 1.12. The alternative hypothesis is greater than, and so the p-value is the area to the right of our observed test statistic of 1.12, under a t-distribution with three degrees of freedom. And if we go to software, we can find that that area is approximately 0.17. The p-value is the probability of getting a sample mean that is at least as large as the observed sample mean of 214 grams. In other words, if I were to go out to my garden and get another four cucumbers, the probability of getting a mean weight of 214 grams or more would be 0.17. And since that p-value is greater than 0.05, we do not reject the null hypothesis. So we have pretty strong evidence that the null hypothesis is true and that the true mean weight of cucumbers in my garden is actually 200 grams. Although you may have been able to spot some of the mistakes I made here, I'll bet that you didn't spot all of them. 
and I'll bet some of them even sounded pretty reasonable. Why did I make this video? There are many outstanding teachers providing outstanding resources online, but there's also a lot of people giving some pretty bad information. It can sometimes sound reasonable if you're not an expert, but it can be completely wrong and misleading. One of the mistakes in this video, putting the sample mean x bar in my hypotheses, was a terrible error, but it's something that I see all too frequently. So I strongly recommend that you get your statistics help from a reputable source.